Hello listeners, Mallory Wilsey here, chief producer of the Enrollify Network, and I want to take just a quick moment to tell you about another show on our podcast network designed specifically for all the education technology enthusiasts out there. The High Reg Geek podcast is a deep dive into the world of educational technology and its transformative impact on the student experience. Geek out each week with host Dustin Ramsdell. His conversations are a mix of engaging storytelling, expert analysis, and a genuine passion for all things higher ed and tech. Whether you're an educator or an administrator or just someone passionate about the intersection of technology and education, this podcast promises to deliver content that's both enlightening and entertaining. You can subscribe to the show by visiting podcast.enrollify.org or by searching The Higher Ed Geek wherever you get your podcasts. Libraries are criminally under-recognized. Yeah. They do have a lot of great resources. There are a lot of great resources in the world of academic libraries. And your library at your institution likely has access to a variety of research databases that are available to schools. Of course, they've got uh, the library that is on campus, uh, but there's so uh, many resources that already exist there, yet they go underutilized by students and, and I think also as well by faculty. Yeah, absolutely. And it's more than just books, right? Like there are all kinds of electronic resources and learning systems that can that can assist you over in the library. So yeah, we can use more data everywhere. And I think that's represented in this study. I mentioned the MIT study, uh, which reflected that higher ed is generally behind in data usage for data-driven decisions. Welcome to the EduData podcast, a podcast that serves as your weekly guide to the data driving higher education. We are your hosts. I'm Jamie Boggs. And I'm Timothy Davis. Join us every Friday for weekly breakdowns of the most important data, trends, and topics in higher education. The EduData podcast is a part of the Enrollify Network, a robust collection of podcasts designed to help higher education professionals like you grow. Explore our other shows at Enrollify.org or check out some of my personal favorites linked in the show notes below. Enrollify is made possible by Element 451, the leading AI-powered, all-in-one student engagement platform, helping institutions create meaningful, personalized, and engaging interactions with students. Learn more at element451.com. Welcome to another episode of the EduData Podcast. I'm Jamie Boggs here with Timothy Davis, who called me his friend last week. So I'll call you my partner and pal. Hey, all right. That? My partner and pal, Timothy we'll Davis. We'll go through the adjectives. That's great. Well, hey, Jamie. Glad to be back for another episode. Hey, everybody listening in. Glad to have you with us. Yeah, last week we shared some good resources with FAFSA data and uh, some really good takeaways on how to find publicly sourced data and tools to use those. And today we're going to focus on how to use that data to, to make decisions. So using data-driven decisions. I know at the corporate level, a lot of places are really... Like they won't do anything unless it's backed by data. I've interacted with a lot of, of companies and organizations that have been that way. And I think higher ed is a place where the data is available. So I think we need to move more in that direction. So we're going to talk about that topic in general today and give you some uh, tips on how to start making data-driven decisions today. So just to start off with a few statistics, almost all colleges now, uh, this is a survey done by EduCause, 97% of schools say that they have dedicated data staff on their campus. Now, for some, that may be institutional research, and, and also that I feel like is a catch-all at, at a lot of schools. Sometimes those offices are able to work on, only on academic research, and at other schools, they are the data center. So, even within that, Timothy, I think it's a, that's a pretty broad umbrella yeah. just to say that there are data And I would say there. probably most of those institutions, the data folks at those institutions are focused on federal reporting. 
Um, again, it's important to submit your reports to the Department of Education so that you can continue to receive financial aid. So that's a big component of the reason that data professionals are on campus. But it's encouraging to see that they are there. I know that there are a lot of institutional research offices that are trying to expand, that are adding new team members that are not solely focused on federal reporting. So a positive trend in the industry to get uh, more data professionals on campus and uh, trying to solve our big problems. Absolutely. And and research shows that higher ed is making progress there. 90% of higher ed leaders believe that data-driven decision-making is crucial. And that's from a, a survey in Forbes. And then MIT did a study, which kind of confirms, I think, what most people would suspect. And that's that higher ed has generally lacked behind business, industry, and even government in integrating data systems and trying to make the most of the data that's available to them. And when you look at the, the bigger issues or the areas in which colleges believe that, that there are data problems, uh, the Chronicle in Higher Ed just did a survey of 452 college officials, and we're going to be referencing that for the rest of this conversation. But I was very interested to see the statistic pulled out, statistics pulled out of which areas of campus do you think need better data and better use of data? Number one, academic advising. Number two, business and financial operations. And I didn't expect that to come up. In ac- I, I'm shocked that academic, ad- yes, abso- absolutely true. That can always improve and get better. But shocked that people pointed to that as 66% of responders said, that's the place where we need the most data. On a second pass, that makes a little bit more sense to me um, because there's just so much need around uh, transferring, around degree completion, uh, around pathways. Those are black boxes uh, for a lot of institutions yeah. and especially for students where the knowledge about how degrees get put together, how credits transfer, how uh, students can go anywhere from your institution, as we like to say, is locked in the brains of the people that actually do that day to day. And so yeah. um, visibility into their work, getting those processes out of the sort of interpersonal office relationships onto paper or into software is definitely needed and would allow academic advising to scale. Right, because you think about like the time it takes to onboard an academic advisor to get them uh, familiar with the campus culture and with the uh, degree offerings, with how the campus functions. Again, if you can bring more of that into software, more of that into automation, you make it more accessible to students. Give it um, the give them more ability to um, you know be self-directed and self-driven and and answer their own questions, uh, but also just be generally more efficient around campus. So, having a second thought. About about it, you know, uh, prepping for this episode a little bit more, that that started to maybe make a little bit more sense. I wonder how uh, how on the mark I am. No, I think you're right. I think that black box piece is huge because if you look at uh, admissions and recruitment and then even financial aid, those are kind of in the middle of the pack. 54% and 45% respectively said more data is needed there. And I think that's because most people assume there is data there. Admissions is a big numbers game. And I think everybody knows that. And obviously financial aids, dollars, dollars, dollars. So we see numbers and we just assume that the data is there and being tracked, which it is, but can always improve, of course. It's definitely there. Is it being tracked? There's the that's that's the yes. phrase that's doing the heavy lifting there. Um, the the one that really surprises me is uh, business and financial operations. We don't have enough data yeah. on that. Y'all, we got to get our money right. That's yeah. that's the that's everybody's paycheck, y'all. We got we gotta have some visibility. That's keeping the doors open, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, sixty-one yeah, um, percent uh... of respondents to that survey uh, said that better data was very needed at that juncture. Yeah, I wonder if those people just want to raise. <laughs> uh, interesting that on on the other end of the spectrum, the lot, the bottom two with only 31% and 27 respectively saying that there is very needed more data or data is very much needed is residence life and libraries. I have a background in residence life and, you know, I think that's an issue where people just don't think numbers are as important. Of course, they're, you have to fill the beds, but as far as actual student service, I think there's not a lot of data that is 
thought to be there, but of course that can change as well. And then as a math person, I, I know where the library was on my campus, but I can't speak to their data. I, I never went there. Libraries are criminally under-recognized. Yeah. They, they do have a lot of great resources. There are a lot of great resources in the world of academic libraries. And your library at your institution likely has access to a variety of research databases that are available to schools. Of course, they've got uh, the library that is on campus. Uh, but there's so many resources that already exist there, yet they go underutilized by students and, and I think also as well by faculty. And it's more than just books, right? Like there are all kinds of electronic resources and learning systems that can that can assist you over in the library. So yeah, we can use more data everywhere. And I think that's represented in this study. I mentioned the MIT study, uh, which reflected that higher ed is generally behind in data usage for data-driven decisions. But what did this Chronicle survey say as far as what people on campus believe where they stand. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that it says basically the same thing. 73% of the respondents said that higher education uh, compared to the corporate world is behind when it comes to using data to improve operations and serve its mission. So yeah, I think a, a lot of agreement there. Um, but we, we tend to view ourselves at least about the same as other institutions. So I think there's maybe a lack of urgency there that we recognize that the industry as a whole is behind. So we're not as urgently trying to catch up. Um, 56% of respondents said uh, rate their, um, their institution against other institutions as about the same in its ability to make decisions that are informed by data. Hey, it's Mallory. Exciting news. I'm hosting the Engage Summit in Raleigh on June 25th and 26th, and I'd love to meet you there. Together, we'll dive into the mind of the modern student, what fires them up, how they interact, and what they expect in today's digital age, and how tools like AI help put them in the driver's seat of their education. We have some terrific speakers, including our closing keynote, New York Times bestselling author, Jeff Salingo. Sessions will dig into practical ideas and innovative strategies to get your team more student-centered and ready to adopt AI. And many of your favorite Enrollify hosts are presenting too, like Jamie Hunt, Jenny Lee Fowler, and Brian Gross. Use the discount code Enrollify50 for an extra $50 off your registration. Learn more and register at engage.element451.com. We can't wait to see you there. Yeah, you're right. I think the lack of urgency is is kind of what causes this problem. And I think part of that survey is exactly what you said. I wonder if part of it's also pride. It's like, yeah, we're as good as our peers, whatever that may mean or whatever. Uh, very few, just 15% believe they're ahead of their peers. So uh, I'd be interested to know who is represented in that 15%. I find that pretty fascinating. How can you make better data-driven decisions? Now, Harvard, their Center for Educational Policy Research has put out a self-assessment on how your institution is using data to make decisions. I'm going to put that link in the show notes, and to some degree that guides uh, the rest of this conversation, but just know that there, there are ways to assess kind of where are we in these, in these different areas. And the first one I want to talk about is just getting a baseline. You can't measure what's happening now if you don't have anything to measure it against. So that's historical data, historical trends. And like we said, that that data lives somewhere, right? But you have to know what you're measuring against. And a lot of that has to do with what goals am I looking at? Are we looking at our ROI being enrollments? Is it applications? Is it actual financial aid dollar amounts, grant funds, whatever that may be? You need to know what that looks like historically so that you can set goals and measure those goals. So you have to have a data baseline. Once you have that baseline, you set your goals. You need to set up some kind of ongoing data monitoring. Summit, summative assessment's great, whereas you can, at the end of the year, let's look back at what we did this year. Let's, let's have a party and look at our numbers. But 
it's it's ideal to be able to look at it with measurements and milestones throughout the year. And then that way you can say, where were we at this time last year? Where were we with this population in recruitment at this time over the last five years? Which way are we trending and how's that going? And there are so many tools, Timothy, that you can use to to measure this ongoing this data in an ongoing way so that it's not a again, like you said, it's kind of like a black box. It's like, well, we did better than last year. Don't really know why or how or when, but it was better this year. Right. Yeah. And I think that this can be done incrementally, right? I mean, looking at like the the average sort of data-driven decision-making process that happens on a campus right now is probably institutional research is aggregating up the data that they need to send to um, the DOE and they're getting that into their spreadsheets or into their reports or however that needs to be constructed or however they like to construct it internally. Maybe they've got it in a database. Cross your fingers they've got it in a database, but they very well could just have that baby in an Excel spreadsheet. And, hey, yep. the world runs on Excel. If you didn't know that, it's running on Excel 97. Like, it's not even running on the, the, the 2000s version yeah. of Excel. <laughs> and you can use that data. That doesn't make it's it bad data. At all. It's just a matter of getting it together. Right. I mean, just – Thank your stars, it's there. Right, right, right. right. Some folks maybe even went fancy and took connected that Excel spreadsheet to an access database. If you did that, give yeah. yourself a pat on the back. That is some next level stuff. Also, let me introduce you to some more fun things than Microsoft <laughs> Access. Yes, some more usable. Microsoft Access software. will make you pull your hair out, but. I am bald. That's what happened. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Jamie used Microsoft Access one too many times. It's like flying too close to the sun. So IR gets that together. They've got it in the, the place that it needs to be. And then maybe your campus leadership, your president, your cabinet, whatever that looks like, is getting together, looking at that data, looking at your cohorts and saying, you know, here is maybe a reasonable estimate of where our enrollment will be in, in this next year. And based on that enrollment forecast, then we can also make a budget forecast, right? And that's what like data driven decision making looks like in a maybe in the current like state of the art or the average state of the art Um, but you know talking about getting a baseline uh, and then implementing ongoing data monitoring right that I think is is maybe the next step right so instead of doing year over year aggregates maybe start going to quarter by quarter or term over term see if you can pull that together so that you can start to see these trends uh, emerge a little bit faster than year over year because even looking at term over term right you're starting to to see uh, a closer to real time estimate of like when um you know when certain events happen you're talking about like when campus tours happen or when enrollment uh, orientations happen or whatever that may be you know what do our numbers do around those times and how can we gauge the success of those things against how that shifts the data think about if you took a course and the only grade was based on the final exam that's essentially what we're doing with summative data we're just taking that final piece and saying this represents everything we've done this year when in reality it always doesn't right so i think what a great example yeah you can absolutely break down more incrementally uh, to look at at how the yearly trends uh, emerge over time or emerge throughout that year. So uh, an incremental step that you might look into taking at your institution. Yeah, and to know what you're measuring is is correct, you need to establish exactly what are we putting into this and what are we looking to get out of it? What is your ROI, your return on investment? Getting to that key stat of, of dollars per enrolled student is would be huge for anybody. That's really difficult to do because students bring different financial aid packages. You have to factor in how long they're at the school. So it's really tricky, but you have to have something, whether that's, we need this many enrollments. So let's say you're trending upward in your enrollment. Your goal for next year is to increase by 10%, 10% more enrollments, but you actually budget, let's say you, a miracle happened and you got a 25% increase in budget and you increased by 10% enrollment you're losing money potentially depending on what those budgets look like. So are you maximizing your budget to get the most return on that investment? And you can't know that unless you know what that ROI is going to be. So it's not just a matter of meeting those goals. It's a matter of what resources am I putting into those goals to make sure that I'm getting it back. And those resources, obviously is staff personnel, software, CRM, uh, marketing. and, And I realize that marketing and admissions aren't always uh, in the same building or sometimes, unfortunately, the same 
universe, but your ROI can be enrollments. It can be the dollar amount. It can be retention, persistence, graduation rates. It can be beds in housing. It can be whatever, but you have to know what's going into it and what you're getting out of it in order to make sure that uh, you can defend. And that's what data-driven decisions is about in my, like, I'm, I'm a big cover your butt fan. Like, I, if I make a decision, I want to be able to say, this is why I did it objectively so that, I don't know, not to say that it's not my fault, but I had a good reason to do this instead of just making changes. And I'll talk more about Absolutely. that in a minute. Well, and if I can, and, if I could stop yeah, here and be please. an apologist for higher education, you know, I mean, I know that we talk about, and we looked at the data, higher ed is behind on uptake of, of data usage, data utilization, data decision-making. Um, but we're not exactly selling shoes online, are we? Like the data, getting data together, making these informed decisions, figuring out how to even calculate ROI at your institution is hard. It's very yeah. difficult to get that together, to figure out the best way to slice it up for your institution to, to come to that figure and then to do that over time. We're talking about students that are out on our campus for two, four, six years, and we're talking about a buying cycle that happens over the course of a decade, maybe? Like, yep. this takes a lot. It takes a lot. And so getting your head around that, getting the data together to understand that progression and that um, that development of a student into your institution is hard. So, again, for as much as we're going to say, you know, higher ed is behind, higher ed is, is not behind for bad reason, right? We haven't exactly been lazy here, and please don't hear us uh, being accusatory. And I think that that's important to keep in mind as we as – we, um, you know, talk about these tips and, and again, just try to advance the industry, try to get us going and, and give us practical ways to, to move forward and to continue to advance. I certainly don't mean to be uh, dismissive. That's not the, the deal, right? The rising tide raises all ships, right? Let's all move in the right direction. There was a study done by BARC Research, B-A-R-C. I spent more time looking to find out what BARC stands for than I probably should have. I can't find it. So BARC Research, this says that basically big data users, so companies, higher ed institutions, corporations that use data in a major way, ultimately cut their costs by overall costs by 10% by using more data. And that's hard to convince somebody of uh, in, in higher education a lot of times. We need more money. We need a data person in admissions. We need that. And, and I know a lot of places do have that and some wish they had it, but that can ultimately let's pay somebody whatever a year and that person's work is going to save us so much money that it's a, again, a good return on investment. We've mentioned before that even if you can't go out and hire more data people, we totally understand, like budgets are tight, higher ed already has a recruiting and talent crisis on its hands. If you can't go out and hire those people, try to train your folks internally. If you've got business analytics courses or even a computer science course, get your folks in those classrooms to at least audit them. And, and see if you can start to upskill your existing staff. Um, the Where I wanted to go with that uh, as a way to tie in another podcast, if you caught a recent episode of In Your Element, uh, which is our sort of Element 451 user podcast uh, hosted by Brendan and Daniela, they talked to Pitt Community College in North Carolina about their operations team, their CRM operations team effectively, which is a cross-departmental team that gets together and are like the power users of their CRM, right? And they, they each have their own sort of responsibilities and domains of expertise. I think that it would be very possible to implement a similar system for data and for reporting and then ultimately for data-driven decision-making. Pull together the constituents across your university that maybe have the deepest skill sets for data and analytics uh, and get them together to, to be able to put together a comprehensive system and use a piece of software or use a solution really effectively. Absolutely. And that's a great segue into my next point. I only have a few left, I promise. But re getting up to date on best practices, use those people, like you said, audit courses, send people to conferences. A lot of webinars are available. And Rollify does webinars all the time with this exact kind of thing. There are so many resources out there, including the dashboard we shared last week for the FAFSA and all kinds of research publications. There's no reason not to be up to date. Again, I know it costs time. That's what it costs, right? But again, investing in that will ultimately save 
your department and your institution money. And then try new things. If you're learning about these best practices, no, we've never done that before. But if you're looking to be more efficient and everybody in the industry said this works, let's give it a shot. Doing the same things the same way we've always done them is always one of our biggest mistakes. You can call Blockbuster Video and ask them about that. We need to evolve and implement new things. And then once you do, assess those things. So you have to give them time. You can't make a big uh, adjustment, add to your out-of-home marketing budget, and then give it a month and throw it away, right? You have to give it time to work. The ideal situation we want to be in is where we have a culture where every decision you make can be backed up by some type of data. You can defend that in your staffing, your budget, your strategies, and your overall philosophy at applying your, uh, again, your culture to whatever those outcomes are. So build your decisions around data, and then you won't have to worry about going out and finding the data to, to support that. Yeah, yeah, and that, and just to bring that back around and mention that Harvard Center of Education Policy uh, uh, Research Self Assessment, definitely have a look through that and see if you can complete it. Not just as a self assessment exercise, but also just as a learning exercise, because the questions that you'll encounter in that survey might frame the problem or just bring new terms, new ideas to light for you that you might be able to explore on your campus. And once you go, and I, I'm going to send a link to the uh, self-assessment because I think you need to start with that baseline of looking at yourself, but they have a ton of other resources, case studies and, and kind of guides for optimizing your data usage. So a lot of good resources over there. Uh, make sure you, again, it's a, it's a free resource. Take, a, take advantage of that. So uh, I'm off my soapbox. Uh, we're going to make data-driven decisions and say that our investment in over 20 minutes of a podcast is the perfect amount to get an ROI. Is that all right with you? Absolutely. Yeah, I think we probably solved it. So yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. All right, we'll be back next week, guys. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us. Yeah, I was gonna say if you're if you're on LinkedIn and you want to connect and talk about this more, we can obviously talk about it ad nauseum. So please uh, drop us a message or reach out and connect. We'd love to talk to you some more if you want to uh, brainstorm or just talk about your current situation and ways that you can incrementally improve. We'd love to talk about that and maybe even get some ideas for the podcast stuff that we could talk about. Yeah, we're eager to learn from you as well. So get with us for sure. See you in the next one. The EduData podcast is part of the Enrollify podcast network. If you like this podcast, chances are you'll like the other Enrollify shows too. Our podcast network is growing by the month. We've got a plethora of marketing, enrollment, and higher ed technology shows that are jam-packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks, all designed to empower you to be a better higher ed professional. Our shows help higher ed marketers and admissions professionals find their next big idea and feature a selection of the industry's best as your hosts. Learn from Jamie Hunt, Artis Kadu, Dustin Ramsdale, Jeremy Tears, and so many of your other favorite leaders in higher ed. And Rollify is made possible by Element 451, the leading AI-powered all-in-one student engagement platform helping institutions create meaningful, personalized, and engaging interactions with students. Learn more at element451.com.